fifth anniversary of Olmstead, about living in the communities of people with disabilities and not being put away in nursing homes and institutions. Institutions and nursing homes are the worst situation that people can be in. They aren't needed. With money follows people, the money follows the person into the community, and the person is able to receive services in the community, receive attendant services in the community. You can live a much happier, a much more productive life in the community. I'm very, very honored to be here, to have had the conversation with so many good people that I've had this morning, and hope that we as a legislature will again begin to do what we need to do in regard to funding and being allowed to let those waivers move. They move. A young Georgia housewife with a husband in the military and three young, two young children at home went out one night with some friends. The car they were driving in was hit by a train and she was thrown through the windshield and sustained a severe head injury. Back in the 50s, there was no place to put a young woman with a head injury. With no money, she was placed in Central State Hospital. There, she was beaten and raped. Uh, after she and her family complained to the authorities, 
She was prescribed stronger drugs, gave birth to the third child, and re was released into the community without any resources or any community-based services. After wandering aimlessly around, she returned to Central State Hospital in the 70s, where she was subjected to shock treatment. Later, her son waged a battle to get custody of his mother. The judge felt that he, a young man, was not capable of caring for his mother, and she was ordered placed in a nursing home where she died in 1987 at the age of 63. This may sound like a plot from a B-movie, but it's a painfully true story. I should know. I've worked more years than I care to remember in state-funded institutions. Unfortunately, not a lot has changed in the last 40 to 50 years. Five years ago, the Supreme Court ruled that people with disabilities have a right to live in their communities. But without community-based services and resources, some 5,000 souls still languish away in state-funded facilities. My husband, Doug, and I are participating in this long road home march in support of our friends and family with disabilities. We march as taxpayers. We're ashamed of how our hard-earned dollars are being spent on institutionalization. We do this in the name of that young mother I told you about. Her name was Bonnie Haywood, and she was my mother-in-law. We are people now. We are brothers. We are people now. Thank you for having us here today. Thank you for coming. We are the domain. We will be going to the governor's office on Tuesday, and we will be demanding something in our name and your name as well. Because we don't believe that people especially people with disabilities should be housed in institutions. We believe that in the community and we're working to that end. That's the reason why we're doing this and we thank you for having us here today and we were carrying if, if not you yourself, we will carry your name with us and present it to the governor on Tuesday. I'm glad you're out marching. I think it's a fantastic thing that you're doing. And keep up the good work. Well, what did I accomplish? What we're out to do? Thank you.
living at the state hospital brought me to a place of submission. Now where I live, it's, it's a lot better, but I feel I need more, not me medical care, f more freedom. But I'm thankful for what I've got right now because I didn't even have that at the state hospital because you had to be watched everywhere you went. Everywhere you went seemed to be planned, something that most people don't like doing because they're living in the moment. The moment is now, and we deserve to be heard. We will be heard. nursing home is like being locked away and told you no longer have a purpose. You're no good for anything but to exist until you die. And that's just not the case. And why do you know, know about all this? Because I've been there. I've been in a nursing home. And I'm glad to be out. I don't ever want to go back Central State Hospital at Brook Run 
at every nursing home and state institution in this state. We want to remember those who are still confined in institutions at nursing homes around the state of Georgia. And just as these lights are burning on these candles, we want to keep the fire burning in our hearts. The earnest desire to do something about the conditions that we find and see that many of us have gone through. It's time to put a stop to it. Not tomorrow, not next month, not next year. But two o'clock tomorrow. And with that word, we extinguish our candles, but we keep the fire burning in our hearts. Amen. All right. yeah. Thank you. The long road home symbolizes the long, hard, tortuous road to getting out of nursing homes and institutions and getting back into the community, getting back into a home of your own. That's what it's all about. And that's why we're out here marching, not just for ourselves, but for all of those that are left behind in nursing homes and institutions all over Georgia. The governor made a promise when he was running for election that he would do more to increase Georgia's compliance with Olmstead, do more toward getting people out of institutions. He hasn't done it. He hasn't followed up. A lot of words, but so far, not a lot of action. We're making this march today to say to him, it's time to put some action behind your words. It's time to let the buck stop with you and do exactly what you said you were going to do. Quit playing with us. Hey, we vote too. And if, we don't, and if he don't know it, next election, we're going to show it. Out their basic human needs. 